All right, guys, we heard you loud and clear. Thanks to all of your requests and comments for a 2v2 tier list, we sat down with one of the most legendary players in the game, Big Max, and created an updated tier list for the 2v2 bracket in Season 3. In this video, we're going to be ranking each DPS spec, ranging from S tier all the way down to D, while providing you with the best partners to pair up with each DPS. So, if you're looking for the easiest way to grab that elite set with your buddy, make sure to stay tuned. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at skillcap is backed by a rating game guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. Starting with the S tier, we of course unsurprisingly have Demon Hunters, who ideal partner is a Restoration Druid. Demon Hunters currently have it all, with high sustained damage, great burst with essence break, frequent CC chains, and excellent survivability. All while having the 2 minute cooldown on Metamorphosis which acts as a solid I win button on its second use due to how fast dampening racks up in 2v2. And because Master Shapeshifter and Call of the Elder Druid exist, Resto Druids make the perfect partner for Demon Hunters in 2s as they can deal incredibly high damage while also being close to the fight, allowing them to easily cyclone targets and assist in the Demon Hunters essence break burst window. Resto Druids also have a really easy time drinking thanks to Shadow Meld Prowl, which allows the comp another great win condition with mana simply by doing oppressive damage, partly thanks to the Demon Hunter's Mortal Strike effect. To create another S tier composition, you can also substitute the Restoration Druid for a Restoration Shaman. This comp is far more disruptive and aggressive than the Druid variant thanks to the Shaman utility of an extra interrupt, static field, and grounding totem, which allows the Demon Hunter to avoid being crowd controlled and have free reign of the arena. Shamans are also able to do incredibly high burst damage with instant lava bursts and can set up reliable cross CC with lightning lasso, making scoring kills just that much easier. The Shaman variant does have its problems though, as if the game goes on too long and you don't win with the second metamorphosis, their healing becomes far too weak to support the Demon Hunter in late dampening. As a final note, Demon Hunter is so powerful that it can honestly be played with any healer, but be aware that playing without a Druid or Shaman will drop the comp's strength down significantly, as no other healer brings the HPS, utility, or crowd control that Druids and Shamans provide. Dropping down to the A-plus tier now, we have Windwalker Monks. Windwalkers are very similar to Demon Hunters in 2s, as they are able to avoid damage with their mobility while having ridiculously high burst damage on their setups every 45 seconds by incapacitating one target and leg sweeping and bursting the other. Windwalker Monks are especially deadly in 2v2, as unlike in 3v3, they can't be peeled by a third target, and as dampening racks up higher and higher, the setup becomes simply unhealable. Outside of this burst window, Windwalker's consistent damage is also pretty strong. However, unlike the S tier Demon Hunters, if they stay in the fight for too long, Windwalkers can easily die due to how weak their damage and mitigation cooldowns are, combined with their fairly long cooldowns. Although one caveat to this is how powerful of a defensive touch of Karma is in dampening, it can allow the Windwalker to stay in the fight while also dealing huge damage back to the enemy if they choose to hit into it. When it comes to partners for Windwalkers, Restoration Druid is your best bet. This is because of their high healing allowing the monk more opportunities to get Serenity and leg sweeps off, as well as being able to Cyclone off their in-cap or re-stun off their leg sweeps, making their setups force far more cooldowns. Other healers can work, but will drop the composition down a few tiers, as the longevity a druid brings is second to none. However, if you want a more aggressive variant, you can opt for a Holy Paladin due to their Hammer of Justice, Blinding Light, and Blessing of Protections, which allow the monk to set up far easier without having to rely on their own incapacitate. Or even go for a Holy Priest, who can provide some added damage with big holy fires and mind games, along with added CC with Chastis, Fear, and Mind Control. Moving on, Survival Hunters are also in the a tier when paired with the Restoration Druid, however this composition is often seen as one of the harder ones to execute. Relying on the kiting prowess of the Survival Hunter, this composition is a glass cannon of sort due to Hunter's abysmal defensive kit. However, if performed well, this comp can rise in the ranks due to its long CC chains with traps followed by cyclones while dealing immense pressure at the same time. This comp is great at cleaving, as you can scatter the kill target low and then clone them off while swapping onto the healer, allowing you to get both targets low. This scatter clone chain on the DPS is also integral to the composition's survivability though, so if it gets shut down, both the Hunter and Druid are sitting ducks with no other peels. Next up we have the A tier, which is pretty stacked with viable classes, and even includes a double DPS composition for all you old school PvPers out there. First up, we've got Outlaw Rogues, who also want to ideally pair up with a Restoration Druid. This comp is one that can have the potential to get the highest ranks on the ladder, however, is incredibly difficult to pull off. Relying on impressively long crowd control chains and cycloning targets low, Outlaw Rogue Restoration Druid is probably the most annoying composition to face in 2v2, 
as although Outlaw doesn't do that much damage, the sheer amount of CC this comp can make people sit in is enough to make Joe Fernandez quit the bracket. As you're going to be sitting in endless stuns, gouges, clones, and disarms until you're slowly whittled away in dampening. The main problem with this comp is simply the amount of effort you have to put in compared to the S tier or A plus tier comps. But if extremely long controlled games are what's appealing to you, then this comp can really go the distance. Moving on, we have Assassination Rogues, which deal incredible two target cleave, as well as having a great win condition with a Cold Blood Kingsbane. Critting incredibly hard, the Assassination's target is often hit for well over 200k through this combo, which is generally enough to take out anyone later into the match due to their bleed softening both targets to around 50% HP. Unfortunately for Assassination Rogues though, they are pretty squishy and come with long cooldown defensives, meaning they can easily die if they stay in the fight for too long. For this reason, the best healers to pair with an Assassination Rogue are of course the powerhouse healer of Restoration Druid, which will allow them to play out the longest game possible, or you could go the opposite way and grab yourself a Disc or a Holy Priest and play for full out aggression, winning the game before your weak defensives get the better of you. Next up we have Arms Warriors, who deal strong single target pressure into cloth, leather, and mail classes, often winning the game through extended uptime on their targets. Sadly for Warriors though, this uptime can be hard to find into the current melee meta due to their absurd kiting potential, leaving Warriors in a pretty rough spot. It's for this reason that Warriors ideally want to be paired with a Fist Weaver as they stick to the Warriors target, allowing them to chase anywhere on the map, making it far easier for the Warrior to overwhelm healers with poor mobility such as Priests and Shamans. Warriors can also find success playing with Restoration Druids or Restoration Shamans, however these compositions are far harder to pull off, traving the Fist Weaver's consistent damage for more crowd control, utility, and longer games. Moving on, we also have Subtlety Rogue in the A tier in the first double DPS comp of the tier list, with a Frost Mage as their partner. This comp is currently performing well on the ladder because of how many Druids and Demon Hunters there are in the meta, which Rogue Mage can easily take down since neither can play Orc to take advantage of the stun reduction ratio hardiness. With huge burst windows from Icy Veins, Frost Bomb, Ray of Frost, Secret Technique, Smoke Bomb, and Shadowy Duel, it's easy to see how this comp can destroy uncoordinated teams. And without a third player to shut down the setups, Rogue Mage can execute their goes without much hassle by only having to cover two targets. If all that wasn't enough though, their survivability is also pretty good with Alter Time, Ice Blocks, Mage Food, Vanishes, and Polymorphs, allowing a skilled Rogue Mage to actually live a pretty long time if played well, but it will take a ton of practice to master playing without a healer. Rogue Mage isn't just limited to Frost though, as it's still playable with Fire or Arcane. However, both will have less burst damage, as well as Fire having a much harder time to survive due to Glass Cannon. As for the Rogue specs, Subtlety is really preferred due to the burst and control, but you can play a far more aggressive version with Assassination to varying degrees of success. The next comp we have in our A tier belongs to Marksmanship Hunters who want to pair with a Restoration Druid. This comp lives and dies by its massive one-shots. It deals so much damage that it's unhealable in late dampening, often going for a strategy of using a Diamond Ice Trap on the kill target which allows the Marksmanship Hunter to cast Sniper Shot after, globaling their enemy in an instant. The Druid can also assist in these kills by using Cyclone on the kill target instead, or simply just bashing them so they can't escape. And if the game goes on too long, the Marksman can turn into a turret with Rapid Fire's channel continuing to do damage even if the opponent is line of sighting. Despite its huge potential damage though, this comp is pretty gimmicky as it has very low consistent damage and can get easily shut down with any form of CC as well as the Hunter being very squishy. Therefore, its rating ceiling is pretty capped due to its one dimensional gameplay and lack of defensives, which all Hunter specs share. Next, Beast Mastery Hunters join Marksmanship Hunters in the A tier and also want to pair with Arresto Druid. This comp is based around consistent pet damage, although this is both a BM Hunter's strength and weakness as it allows them to avoid damage while their pets do the work but also leaves them very vulnerable to having their damage reduced significantly when their pets get rooted, and with every team having a druid or shaman, this issue occurs pretty frequently. BM hunters also lack the burst damage to land kills in their very short CC chains, so can find it difficult to generate pressure, especially since they are constantly under attack from the meta melees, which are simply unkiteable for any hunter spec. Our final A tier composition belongs to Demonology Warlocks, who once again prefer to pair up with a Restoration Druid. This comp aims to out attrition teams with its high control, consistent damage, and mortal strike effect from Felguard. Demonology Warlocks are masters of shutdown and can generally deal with the meta melee's setups with a well timed axe toss, mortal coil, and fear. However, peeling isn't everything, and although Demo Warlocks have the tools to deal with whatever comes their way, their damage just isn't high enough to consistently land kills before they get ran down in deep dampening. And although Resto Druids are ideal for this composition, it can also be played with a Holy Paladin or Disc Priest for a more aggressive variation while remaining in the A tier. 
Dropping down to the B tier now, we have the Fallen Heroes of Season 2 leading the charge with another subtlety rogue comp, this time when they pair up with a Disc Priest. In a meta that is all about spamming damage at every opportunity possible, it's easy to see why subtlety rogues are struggling with their signature hit and run playstyle. Their consistent damage is very low, and with the 90 second trinket change, they can find it incredibly difficult to land that perfect CC chain where the enemy team has no get out of jail free cards left. Although, don't get us wrong, Subtlety Rogues can still dish out ridiculous burst damage with all their cooldowns up. In the era of weak auras, it's all very predictable and easily countered, especially when the opponent has nothing else to worry about all game. Subtlety Rogues are not the only problem with this comp though, as Disc Priests are also underperforming healing wise. However, Disc is still necessary for the damage, CC, and purge. This leaves us with a composition that struggles to heal and also struggles to finish targets, but if you're looking for a hit and run setup playstyle, this may be a comp you want to try out. Also in the B tier we have Unholy Death Knights, who will find most success with the Restoration Druid. Death Knights live and die by their Abomination Limb and Asphyxiate setups, however in 2v2 they are far less potent than in 3v3. This is because Death Knights themselves are only strong at setting up for their teammates, and without an extra DPS or Mortal Strike, they can really struggle to finish off targets. Death Knights are also extremely squishy, which is a horrific combo when they are so reliant on their cooldowns to do any damage, leading them to constantly be on the back foot as they wait for their CDs to rotate back around to deal meaningful damage. Next up are Elemental Shamans who, as always, only excel in the long game. Because of this, Rust of Druid is the best bet healer, as it gives the Shaman the longevity it needs for its damage to overwhelm the enemy team in dampening, as well as giving it more chances to get Ascendance procs. This composition is inherently tanky and has great off healing, however, due to the lack of crowd control, it can be hard to find actual win conditions. Due to the nature of Shamans being so reliant on Flame Shock for damage, it also suffers when the enemy dispels, which makes it especially weak into Demon Hunters who opt to play the Cleansed by Flame PvP talent. Next up, we have Arcane Mages, who ideally want to pair up with Restoration Druids. This is yet another composition that really wants to take the game to high levels of dampening. Arcane Mages are actually pretty strong in the right hands, however it does require a lot of skill to be able to effectively kite the S and A plus tier melees. Because of this, the composition is placed in the B tier, as it's simply too much effort to try and win the game through perfect kiting and CC chains when your opponent is simply just W keying you down. Although, if you're up for a challenge and want to try your hand at Arcane, this comp can be incredibly effective with its huge potential CC chains and consistent damage. Frost Mages can also find success with the Restoration Druid, however, will have a harder time scoring kills than Arcane since it's more reliant on crowd control due to how limited your spell steal is comparatively, and the fact that its main win condition of Frost Bomb and Ray of Frost can easily be shut down. Moving on, we have Destruction Warlocks, who should be opting to play with a Holy Paladin, Holy Priest, or Restoration Druid, as all these healers provide a stun and some damage on your setup. This composition generates pressure through Havoc coiling both targets and finishing the kill target in a stun with overwhelming damage, be it through dimensional rifts and instants or hard casting Chaos Bolt. Unfortunately though in 2v2, this strategy is the only window you can actually land kills in. As the majority of the time, Destruction Warlocks have to deal with the enemy team trying their hardest to line of sight every cast you do until they get their cooldowns back. This can be incredibly frustrating and result in you dying through healing when dampening racks up too high and they finally leave the pillar. Moving on, we have Feral Druids who should look to be playing with the Disc or Holy Priest. Another glass cannon archetype, Feral Priest has very strong crowd control chains with stuns and clones and great pressure with incarnation. Unfortunately though, Ferals are ridiculously squishy and are forced to run away for the majority of the game or risk simply falling over in under a minute. This comp is one survivability buff away from being A tier though, as feral damage and crowd control can be very oppressive, as well as having incarnation on a 2 minute cooldown, which allows them to have a good I win button once dampening really kicks in. Finally, our last B tier comp is for Devastation Evokers, who should look to pair themselves with the Restoration Druid. The main strength of this combo is that both the dragons disintegrate and the druid's cyclone needs to be kicked, leaving the enemy always under the choice of being crowd controlled or taking a huge amount of damage. These kick soaks, along with the ridiculous burst of Dragon Rage, allow the comp to be very bursty and generate a lot of pressure through high value casts. The only problem with this comp though is that it is incredibly squishy and will often die through healing to the meta melees whenever the evoker is put into a stun. Moving down to the C tier now, we have these compositions that can work but don't really have a solid win condition and are struggling hard in the current meta. First off are Ret Paladins, who should be looking to pair themselves with a Preservation Evoker or Disc Priest, as they really need their added pressure to be able to land kills with the extra damage and crowd control these healers bring. Like Death Knights, Ret Paladins don't have a Mortal Strike, which is a huge issue in 2v2 where dealing damage reigns supreme due to how fast dampening stacks up. 
Without it, Rhett Paladins look to score kills with their Hammer of Justice on healers, but are often stuck in midfield, struggling to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the S and A plus tier melees, as well as being kited by almost every ranged class. With their survival being based on healing, which is also heavily negated by dampening, it's no wonder that Rhett Paladins are really struggling in 2v2. Next up are Boomkins, whose ideal partner are Restoration Shamans, as they are one of the only healers that can keep them offensive due to their strong single-target healing and Earthen Wall totem, allowing them to tank damage while casting Cyclones. Shamans are also great for Boomkins offensively, as they can lock down the kill target with Lightning Lasso, a stun that Boomkins really need to be able to land kills since Mighty Bash is such short duration. In theory, Boomkins shouldn't be too horrible in 2v2 due to their incarnation dealing so much damage, but by having it on a 2 minute cooldown, they're guaranteed to have huge pressure as dampening sets in. Unfortunately for Boomkins, getting to this second incarnation can be a huge pain though, as they are one of the squishiest classes in the game. This is because their defensives are very weak, and like a bunch of the other weak classes in 2v2 are based on healing. Another huge difficulty Boomkins face is that landing crowd control is exceptionally difficult as every healer plays max range. And the fact that Root Beam is basically useless when every other team is a Restoration Druid or a Restoration Shaman who can break out of it with the press of a button. Moving on, we have Shadow Priests, who can find a crumb of success when playing with a Restoration Druid. In a bracket dominated by melees, it's easy to see why Shadow Priests are struggling. They have to cast far too much to generate any semblance of pressure, they have no tools to kite, and if the enemy team want to reset, all they have to do is walk behind a pillar to safety. Shadow Priests also take way too much damage from the meta melees, which is another huge hurdle, as casting while you're getting trucked by 100k DPS is probably one of the most stressful situations you can be in. To make this composition work, you need excellent offensive play from your Restoration Druid, allowing the Shadow Priest to cast with Bashes and Cyclone, and setting up for drinks as frequently as possible, as the only way you're really going to win is in the late game once all the enemy's cooldowns have slowly been shipped away. Finally, our last C tier composition is Affliction Warlock, who, you guessed it, wanna be paired up with a Restoration Druid. Affliction suffers in the 2v2 bracket as it has to cast far too often, and games are far too fast for it to ramp up damage. Affliction also doesn't get that much value in twos as it can only dot two targets, making its rot playstyle pretty manageable for the enemy team. The only glimmer of hope for this composition is that the Affliction Warlocks can be fairly tanky with Essence Drain in the early game, and its pressure can be overwhelming when dampening sets in, but getting to that point is a huge struggle itself. Lastly, we have the D tier, where we have the compositions that can work at lower ratings, but are too much of a glass cannon and vulnerable to get any higher. First off, we have Enchantment Shamans, who are fairly similar to Ret Paladins. Their defensives are based on healing, they get kited far too easily, and to top it all off, they have no mortal strike. Because of these reasons, they should be looking to pair themselves with the Preservation of Ochre or Holy Paladin, as the extra damage and crowd control is crucial for landing kills, as the Enhance really has no CC of its own. Apart from being kited by ranged and their defensives being poor, enhanced shamans are also very susceptible to being trained down by the other melees, making them have no good matchups at all. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about skill capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. And with that, we conclude our 2v2 tier list. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.